Alright guys, Tachiko are back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to F1 News and two weekends into the season, two phenomenal races. Another cracking one here today in Jeddah. I was concerned there was it was going to be a messy race, right? Turns out there was a few incidents, but it was pretty clean, all things considered. Phenomenal racing all across the boards. So much to dive into today, a very eventful one. And once again, a very entertaining Grand Prix, which we certainly lacked the last few years. Exciting stuff. Intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Firstly, good to see Mick Schumacher back in business today. Like a um, neck Schumacher, people are calling him. His neck is absolutely immense. But um, I mean, yeah, he has the thing he said he wanted to race today. Has decided to pull him out. So it kind of makes sense. Make sure the car's all good to go for Melbourne in a couple of weeks' time. But um, yeah, he wasn't racing. Magnussen had to try and do it all in the house. Was some concerns before the race began about Carlos Sainz Ferrari? Because um, there were some issues they were working on about 40 minutes or so. Turns out, as it worked out, it was actually okay for him in the end. And he had a pretty good race. But couldn't quite match the pace of the top two that We'll see here in a second. But this race could have gone so many different ways with the way the safety cars work. I was wondering, to be honest, if um, kind of Hamilton would decide to go from the pits with a different setup, just kind of in the theory that there might be a safety car we can close up this type of stuff. But track position ended up being too important, especially with him going up to 15th because Yuki Tsunoda had an issue before things even kicked off. Right, Pretty bad start to the season for Red Bull powertrains, but it seems generally Alpha Tauri have um, really struggled so far, and Tsunoda especially. So some sort of issue, the warm-up lab, like his car just grinds to a halt and he had to retire from the race already before it even began so that was very unfortunate for him but um, I mean yeah still the race of course goes on this isn't the greatest quality but it just gives you an idea of what the race strategy was meant to be going in there was a few cars that started on the hearts Hamilton being one Magnussen being another most started on the mediums with the intention to probably do a two stopper or either a one stopper which is effectively what happens and with the safety cars a one stopper actually seemed more viable and I'm um, just that the whole pit strategy went out the window at times just the timing of the safety car was pretty bad for Checo Perez or well terrible for Checo Perez, we'll see here in a second. But um, yeah, the degradation today, especially on the hards, didn't seem to be anywhere near as bad as we saw in Bahrain. I was thinking it probably would be another two-stop race, but turned out not to be that for the majority of the drivers and teams. So here we go, lights out and away we go. Perez gets a great start. It was actually Sainz who got a rocketing start off the line, but um, actually just the way Leclerc had to pull out and like kind of, well, the situation that went down at the front, Sainz actually got kind of boxed out a bit and Max basically sent one down the inside. Doesn't get the move done here, but gets the move done just after turn one. So Max already up into P3 at this point. And then George Russell makes a cracking move on Ocamart. I was wondering really, like the Mercedes, the way it was looking and qualifying, whether it would actually even be able to compete with the Alpines, to be honest, or at least um, whether they'd have a back and forth affair. Russell gets past Ocon. Russell had a fantastic race, to be honest. I think a lot of people aren't really talking about him, what he managed to do in this Mercedes today, which um, clearly wasn't the greatest car, right, but puts it in well, a pretty decent position at the end of it. Of course, he passes Ocon right here. Some great moves were going down into this final turn of the lap. And then Ocon and Alonso had this incredible battle, this one especially. Like, apparently the team had told them like yeah just go racing and then after a few laps whoever's in the lead will basically say hold position which is what they did Alonso eventually gets past but this position right here Ocon defending from Alonso like um, he honestly just squeezed him out so far Alonso had to pile on the brakes here he would have gone into the back of him could have been a crazy incident turns out it doesn't happen but some very entertaining racing at the start of things there and um, well then this was the situation Perez had built out a pretty solid advantage at the front then Leclerc then Verstappen then Sainz here in the background there's no doubt about who's leading up the way in the constructors right now but so, yeah, Perez was in a good spot and then it was quite interesting because Leclerc said hey I want a box I want to try and do the undercuts and he said that to his team therefore Red Bull heard that and went like, okay hang on a second we probably need to react let's send Perez into the pit so that uh, well so that Leclerc can't do the undercut behind us right I come out on fresher tires earlier gain some lap time maybe make up this place so Perez comes into the pit and then right as he does so pretty much or at least as soon as he comes back onto the track then Latifi bins it in the wall unbelievable stuff from Latifi actually before that happens we'll talk about that in a second Hamilton was on a bit of a charge took down Norris and he was on an interesting situation because starting on the hard tyres, they started to come in for him about like lap 9 or 10 and he was ready to go a pretty long stint right here. I guess they were hoping that no safety car occurred. But that's exactly what happens. Like he takes down Gallaudet as well. Hamilton was up to P10 at this point. He was kind of flying and on this pace, a few more laps, he might have been in a fantastic position come the end of the race. Didn't really work out like that though because Latifi, as I say, bent it in the wall. This is kind of the Verstappen spot on this final turn and um, yeah, honestly, don't know what he was playing at here. Latifi is always a good bet to bin it in the wall. Of course, he did it last, uh, last year's out of Dhabi Grand Prix. But anyway, you guys know how the, the marshals are in Saudi Arabia. Took them a fair bit of time to clear this one away. The safety car comes out, puts uh, Perez per in a very tough spot, right? Because he drops down to P4. And even though he kind of got P3 for a little bit, he ended up having to give that place back because technically when Sites came out the pit lane, he was ahead at the safety car line. Therefore, they had to swap round after the restart. So Perez from, well, on pole right at the start, he had a great start to the race, ends up in fourth position. Not ideal at all. Now, of course, everyone else pretty much pits. However, Hamilton doesn't decide to 
because I guess the, the theory was from the Mercedes guys, there probably might be another safety car at some point. We've got good pace on these tyres right now, like um, the degradation isn't really there. Hamilton said they were pretty good. If we pit now, we've kind of lost all the potential advantage you might have from going on that longer stint. So Mercedes kind of took the risk and left Hamilton out there as they did with Magnussen, and it worked out initially. They had a bit of a back and forth. It's crazy, honestly, to see the game of chicken that goes down at the final quarter now. This wasn't really the case last year, but um, usually if you could overtake, you just go for the overtake because it's so difficult to follow and get a good exit out of the final turn. But this year, you can still get a great exit out of like turn 23 or whatever it is and challenge back down the back straight. So Hamilton overtakes going into the final corner, made that move a few times and had held off all his other rivals since then. But the Haas comes flying back down the main straight with the power of Ferrari, comes back past Hamilton with the DRS and the next lap, Lewis plays it a bit more smart and we saw this uh, throughout the race as well where on the next lap, he then decided, okay, let me just hold back on the DRS detection points so that I still have DRS on the straight and then I can make the move happen. So that's what happened there. Hamilton goes above Magnussen, but uh, the Haas, if anything, get kind of lucky the way the safety car, the second safety car, ended up playing out when it was a virtual safety car at the time. So at the front, it was Leclerc leading the way, a 1.5 second gap, and it was pretty impressive, really, because I think uh, Verstappen seemed like he was really giving it a go, trying to get close to Leclerc, but supposedly from the pit wall side of things, like um, he was basically just taking it relatively easy on the tyres. The degradation early on seemed to be worse for Red Bull than it did for the Ferraris. So he was kind of taking his time holding back maybe a little bit and uh, preparing for the end of the race or an all-out assault, which ends up exactly what works out. Because Ferrari had run the package so that they had great downforce through sector one, it was very much the opposite story of what it was with Red Bull and Mercedes last year. You guys might remember that um, Red Bull was so strong in sector one last season, but it was a uh, Mercedes and the engine that they had that was really strong in sector two, sector three. This time it was kind of the other way around, like what Ferrari did, having a great advantage in sector one, three tenths or so throughout that sector, but then the Red Bull would put it back with more straight line speeds because of the lower downforce. And of course, last year it was Hamilton and the Mercedes that won that, so maybe Ferrari should have taken a hint that that was the way to go in the end. And if that's what Red Bull decided to do, works out very well for them. Now, um, all of a sudden, a little of the race was going to be kind of boring. Maybe Verstappen would put on another attack. But then out of nowhere on lap 36, everything goes down. Alonso's car just completely self-destructs. Like, um, I don't exactly know what happened. It was kind of sad to see because he had a really good race up to this point. He bombs out of there and was really struggling to get back to the pit. Eventually, his car just dies just before the pit lane. Kind of a similar thing to what we saw in, um, I'm pretty sure it was the F2 sprint race, where there was a crash that went down right before the pit lane and the pit exit had to be closed, which really puts Hamilton in a tough spot here and the Mercedes guys in general. Same thing happens to Ricardo. His car breaks down just in the pit entry. So, I mean, yeah, and also Bottas right at this point as well. He has some mechanical failure and has to retire the car. So within like one lap of each other, three cars are out of the race, which should have been pretty perfect for Hamilton, right? Because now the virtual safety car comes through, he can get a stop in with only losing about 12 seconds because he has to stop. Even if he maybe he could have gone to the end of the race on those hard tires, he has to change because you need to run two tire compounds in the race. So we had to go on to a set of mediums and I think he may have had one chance to dive into the pits before the pit lane entry was closed as a result of these incidents but the team told him to stay out maybe because the safety guy hadn't been deployed as of yet. It was a difficult call for those guys to make but in the end Hamilton stays at one lap too many. The pit lane entry is closed. He can't pit under the VSC and therefore he has to pit after the VSC ends. Loses a lot of time and from where he was in P6 if he does a pit stop pretty decent maybe comes out P7, P8 can maybe make it back to like a P6 position at the end of the day which would have been exactly what Mercedes wanted right behind the Ferraris and the Red Bulls with George Russell still running P5. But due to the unfortunate circumstances the pit lane entry may be a bad call from Mercedes because Hamilton drove a pretty flawless race all things considered and had way more pace than we thought we might have seen from him after the qualifying performance but yeah the pit lane entry was closed Hamilton couldn't pit he had to pit after the VSE goes away which left him in a very tough spot I believe initially he went back down to 12th he got to 10th in the end but didn't have quite enough to get past Magnussen like he had managed earlier in the race but up front was really where all the action was going down Verstappen versus Leclerc again and this was fantastic as we saw in Bahrain. Leclerc was using some, some good Jedi mind tricks really against Verstappen, letting him go down the inside in turn one, then kind of getting him back on the turn four DRS point. That's exactly what uh, Leclerc did right here. Verstappen goes down the inside into the final corner, and then, well, Leclerc gets him back on the main straight. But as soon as I saw this, I was thinking, wow, the Red Bull has way more pace in a straight line, and all he has to do is hold on through the first sector, and then he can just bomb it. Like, uh, honestly, like the Red Bull was rapid on the back straights and on, on the pit straight as well. So it really felt like that, okay, if Verstappen gets past him and can maintain a nice gap in sector one, there's no way Leclerc's going to be able to overtake again, given the lacking straight line speed the Ferrari had compared to the Red Bull, given the setups they're using, or like a, maybe the, the Honda engine, the Red Bull powertrain's engine, is just that good this year. And of course, that was a pretty similar thing that finally happened last year, right, when Hamilton managed to keep it close in sector one, then he could really like extend his advantage on the back straight, and Verstappen effectively does the same thing right here. So it was a phenomenal turn of events, really. Like, both of them locked up going into this final corner, because they both tried to make sure that the other driver was, was in front of them, going into this DRS 
Geoix detection line, you can see right here. And um, I mean, yeah, they both lock up going into this point. Leclerc actually just puts the power down because I guess he sees uh, he sees what Verstappen is playing at and actually manages to get a good exit here and stays in front of him. And I was wondering whether the kind of flat spots on Verstappen's tyres could cost him here going into the next couple of laps. But that's not how it works out. Verstappen makes a phenomenal pass on the next lap, gets exactly what he wanted, and really went balls to the wall these last few maps. Eventually gets past Leclerc. Like, um, yeah, some fantastic racing between these guys again. This time it's the other way around and the Red Bull comes out on top. Seemed to be the strongest setup that they had this time just for this particular circuit. Leclerc tried his best, couldn't hold on in the end. And um, yeah, the final corner though was very interesting because for some reason Alex Albon decided to go up the inside and just dive bomb Lance Stroll. Like um, both cars kind of got destroyed at the end of it, especially the Williams he had to retire and therefore there was double yellows I believe in sector one. But the drivers were on the final lap of the race. They don't care. They were trying to do their best. A lot of them were just bombing through anyway, not really slowing down at all. And um, obviously in that type of situation you are certainly meant to, but um, you know, you kind of can't blame the drivers in a way just when you're in that kind of last lap situation and you're trying to fight for the win. But anyway, Verstappen gets the job done, his first victory of the season. And um, well, as Charles says, it wasn't enough today. Oh my God, really enjoyed that race. And it was not just enjoyable, I'm sure, for these guys to race in, but also fantastic to watch as well. So hopefully this continues up for the rest of the season because it's been a great time so far. Now, as of recording, we don't have anything to follow up on the kind of incidents that went down there with it. Well, drivers not slowing down for the yellow flags. Sainz and Perez apparently in consideration. They were P3, P4. So um, well, maybe they get dropped down, right? Who knows what penalty they might give out? Like Russell was right there behind them. Magnussen also potentially under investigation. So the top 10 could change, but um, you know, we'll see, I guess, what they decide to do. I'll update you guys tomorrow. But yeah, it could be a late night of her trying to figure out exactly what's going on here. But this is the top 10. Verstappen, Leclerc, Sainz, again at two Ferraris and a Red Bull on the podium. As we have seen throughout a lot of the practice sessions in this type of stuff, Perez in fourth, like he had a really hard time, right? If anything, he could have been fighting for the win today. He was looking so good. Got it so unfortunate with the way the safety guy happened. Russell with a great drive into P5. Ocon at Norris for a great P7. I'm pretty sure they benefited to some degree from the safety cars. But um, yeah, McLaren getting their first points of the season. And Hamilton, after horrendous qualifying, picks up a point in P10. Apparently his radio message after the fact was like, do, I, do you even get points for 10th place? Because, um, well, maybe he, I imagine he knows. But um, still, he doesn't anything less than the podium. is not really where Hamilton wants to be. But uh, he could have maybe got a, even a P6 today, potentially, if the race played out slightly differently. But uh, yeah, gets a point on the board. Not the end of the world for Mercedes. They're still, I guess, slightly above Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship, but uh, yeah, it's not ideal for them by any means. They're going to need to improve drastically in future races if they want to compete with these teams. This is how it goes. Verstappen, Leclerc, Sainz, Perez, Russell, of course, and well, behind Hamilton, Zhou Guangyu, Hulkenberg, Lance Stroll, Albon. After that incident on the final lap of the race and Bottas, unfortunately, DNF. There were a few DNFs, of course. The Constructors' standings now look like this. A Ferrari extending their advantage quite significantly. Already 40 points ahead of Mercedes now with 38. Red Bull right behind them in 37 after a good performance today. Leclerc, I'm pretty sure, also picked up the fastest lap of this race, which um, definitely is going to add to the tally as this season progresses. Got that twice in a row now. So he's uh, got a significant advantage. 45 for him. Carlos Sainz in 33. Verstappen 25. Perez only 7th and actually Ocon in 6th right now as the driver's standings after a fantastic performance the first couple of races. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. We go to Australia in two weeks' time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like button and subscribe if you're new as always. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.